Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Software Development with C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about the basics of make and make files. So in the previous episodes in this series and a number of different series on the channel, we've largely manually written all of our compiled commands for generating our executables and our libraries. Now, while this can be perfectly fine, right, if we have you know, a very simple program that say is a single source file and doesn't have very many compilation flags, it gets more and more annoying, right, when we start working with more complex projects, right, and even becoming impossible to remember all of the different compilation commands and flags that we're going to need. So it'd be really great if we had a way to centralize all of this information. So a way to write out all of the different rules for compiling our applications and our libraries. Now, this is exactly what we get with things like make and make files. So what we're going to be looking at today is kind of the basics on how we can, you know, write these make files to build our applications, right, and make this process a lot easier. So on the right hand side of the screen, I have the documentation for GNU Make, um, and I'll make sure to link this below the video. Uh, this is some really nice documentation here on GNU.org. You can see there's a fairly comprehensive overview of all the different uh, things that go into uh, Make, how you can run Make, um, and all the different ways you can write uh, your Make files here. So we're going to be looking at three different examples today of um, how we can write some very simple make files and really trying to understand the core concepts. So let's go ahead and get started here with our first example. So we want to compile a simple C++ application here. And of course, that's just our simple Hello World program. So let's go ahead and open up our program. As you can see, not really anything exciting here. We include IOStream and print out Hello World with C out. So let's see how we can write a simple uh, uh, make file right to compile this application so here in the same directory as our code i have this make file here with the uppercase m so make uh, by default will look for a few you know special file names here it look for make file with a lowercase m with an uppercase m oftentimes the uppercase is used just because it sticks out more as a different kind of file and also things like a gnu make file i believe also works so let's go ahead and open up this make file now, the core idea behind uh, make files here is that make files contain all of our different rules for building an application here. And there's three main parts to a rule. A rule has a target, it has prerequisites, and then it has uh, a recipe, right? So the target is basically whatever we want to build with this rule. Our prerequisites is all the things that we need before we can run this uh, or build this target. And our recipe is how exactly we're going to build uh, the target here. So in the case of our simple Hello World application, we want to build some executable Hello World. We want to build it from, right, this prerequisite, this source file, hello world.cpp. And the way that we're going to do that with our recipe is just compile, uh, you know, pass, you know, have this source file to G++ and call our output executable Hello World here. Right, so that's a simple way that we can write a simple rule um, for building an application here. So let's go ahead and see how we can uh, build this with uh, make. Right? So we want to build hello world.cpp. One thing we can do is just type make, and this will ingest our make file and start running our rules uh, you know, from top to bottom. And we can see we only have one rule in this program. It runs that, uh, that rule or the recipe for that rule. And you can see it compiles our application for us, right? It runs that recipe. So now we have this uh, simple hello world uh, program in the same directory here. And we can run it and you can see it prints out hello world. Now, one of the other nice things about make is that make can tell if things are already built. So if we try to run make again, you can see that make comes back at us and says, hey, hello world is up to date, right? We don't have to rebuild it. So that can help save some time if you don't know if your project is built or not. Uh, make can figure that out for you and just not recompile. Though we can force recompile with uh, some of the other flags or options that uh, Make has to offer, like this dash B. So you can see that forces a recompilation right, of our rules. Okay, so another thing that we can do with Make files here, we'll go ahead and get rid of our executable. Um, we can specify specific rules that we want to run here. So for example, I can do Make, and then I can specifically run my rule Hello World here. So we can say specific rules we want to run. Okay, so that's a simple introduction to make files. Let's look at a, uh, a way that we can make our make files a little bit easier to understand and remove some of the um, annoying duplication we had when it came to writing our rules. 
So one thing you might have noticed right in that first example here is we wrote a target, we wrote prerequisites, and then we just reused those names in our actual recipe. So that means that we had to write all of those names again, right? Um, so it'd be really nice if we had a way to, you know, abstract those, you know, out of our uh, out of our make rules, right, and out of our recipes in particular. Um, we've already written that we want to build an application called Hello World. We already know our prerequisite is going to be this uh, you know, Hello World.cpp. So what can we do to make our rules or our recipes a little bit easier to understand? So one thing we can do is use automatic variables. So variables that already that automatically capture, say, what our prerequisites are and what our target is. That way we don't have to rewrite those names over and over. So here we have the exact same kind of setup here. We have this hello world.cpp, this simple program here that we want to build using a make file. So let's go ahead and open up this make file. Now we've done something to simplify this a little bit, right? So we have, you know, the same overall, you know, rule here, right? We have the same target and we have the same prerequisite for this rule, but now we've abstracted away our uh, prerequisite names and our target name uh, with these uh, automatic variables here. So this dollar sign caret represents all of our prerequisites. So this will just expand out to any of the prerequisites that we have. And this dollar sign at here is an automatic variable that represents our target. That way we don't have to rewrite um, our, all of our prerequisite names. So in this case, we just have a single prerequisite, but there may be cases where we have many different prerequisites. So this is a nice way to abstract that information away and make our uh, rules a little more clear uh, and our recipes a little more clear. So let's go ahead and try this out. So we'll go ahead and uh, you know, quit out of here and we'll go ahead and run make. And you can see that those two automatic variables get expanded out to our prerequisite and our target respectively here, right? We just made our rule a little bit easier to understand here and got rid of, of that bit of duplication that we had, right? So it still correctly compiled our application just like our other make file did. Okay, so let's go ahead and go on to our final example here in this directory to make. So here we have a slightly more interesting uh, kind of setup, right? We have multiple different source files now in a header file. So we have some file print add where we're going to include this header file add.h that's just going to be, uh, right, include a function prototype here for add function. And then our implementation for add function will be in this add.cpp. And we can see our code is all pretty simple still. So we can go ahead and, uh, you know, print out, you know, this, uh, the source code for add function. You can see it just takes two integers and returns their sum. Our uh, header file here is also pretty simple. It's just a photo, uh, function prototype for that add function. So just int add that takes two ints. And then we have uh, our print add.cpp where we include this add.h and we use that function. We print out that result, that add 10 plus 20. So it should give us 30 here. So let's see how we can write a simple make file that you know has multiple different steps in it, multiple different rules. So we'll go ahead and open up this make file. You can see we have three rules in here. So our first rule is for compiling our add function. So we'll compile this uh, you know add.o, this object file target, from a prerequisite, this add.cpp, right? In our uh, inside of a recipe, it'll just be g plus plus dash c. And then we're using this automatic variable for our prerequisites again. And we do the very same thing for print add, right? Our print add.o here as our target. So from print add.cpp, we're going to build this object code print add.o. And we're going to do that with g plus plus dash c with this automatic variable for our prerequisites again. And then finally, right, we're going to have our rule for compiling our program here, um, our final executable. So we're going to compile this final executable print add.cpp, but as our prerequisites, we're now going to include uh, the targets from other rules here. So print add.o and add.o. So we've added dependencies between our rules here. So this print add, uh, you know, target here, right, this rule that we've defined is now going to rely on the results of these previous two rules. So before print add can run, these previous two rules have to run, right, because we're required where uh, we have as prerequisites, this print add.o and add.o. And our overall um, recipe here is also pretty simple. We're just going to do G++ on our, um, 
a prerequisite files, these two pieces of object code and generate some executable named print add here. So let's go ahead and quit out of here. Now, of course we know if we just run make, right? What we know what that'll do, that will go ahead and um, it will just kind of run our rules in order here. But we, what we can also do, right? Like we've seen before is we can run say, uh, you know, a specific rule. So let's say, you know, I just want to compile my executable here. So I want to make print add here. Now, because we have this dependency chain here, make is smart enough to know, you know, before we're able to run uh, this recipe here for generating this executable, I have to run these rules that we depend on, right? The ones for generating that object code. So to run this rule print add here, it has to run the recipes for those other rules. So if I do something like make print add here, you can see it automatically will compile our object code for us because we've marked uh, these two pieces of object code, right? This print add.o and add.o, uh, we've marked those as prerequisites before we can compile a print add here. So before we can compile for this target print add, we need to run these other two rules here. So you can see that uh, make does this dependency kind of tracking for us, right? Um, with how these different rules depend on each other. And we get um, our final executable at the very end, right? This print add that correctly prints out 30. Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for this time. It's a simple example of, you know, a couple different ways that we can write these make files. Of course, there's a lot more that we can get into here with respect to um, having rules that clean our directories for us and uh, kind of get rid of all of these, you know, straight piece of object code and our executables or our libraries if you want to clean everything up. Um, and there's also a number of other, uh, you know, very nice features that Make has to offer, as well as other build systems that we'll be looking at. But we'll go ahead and stop there for today. As always, you can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and hope you have a nice day.